Hello friends, welcome to the part 4 of this tutorial series. In the previous video, we created our NestJS API project using the Nest CLI and we also went through the folder structure here. So we saw that we have a service by the name app service and it's uh, returning a string using the get hello method here and if i turn on the development server here using the npm run start dev command so i can call this endpoint using my postman client so i've already opened my postman client here and i can simply create a new get request make sure from this drop down you choose guest and the url will be http localhost 5000 because we are using the port number 5000 and that's it i believe yeah you see we are getting this response back from the uh, server okay so today we will be looking at uh, the a resource part so we would re uh, require few resources as nestjs call it so you can create resources with the help of cli the and that's the approach we will be following in this entire tutorial so let's quickly create or generate a resource and the first resource that will that we will be generating is the post resource so the command to generate a resource is nest generate resource and the name of the resource okay so for us it's post and i'm gonna use dash dash help so i can use these uh flags okay i, I will be using the no spec flag so that i don't have uh, i mean i don't get the spec files okay so hit enter give it few seconds it will ask you whether you want to generate the resource for REST API, GraphQL, microservices, or WebSocket. So for us, it will be REST API. Make sure you choose the correct option there and hit enter. And then it asks you, would you like to generate the correct entry points? I'll say yes, do it. Okay. So it's gener it has generated or created few files and it's updating the package.json and the app module. Give it some time finished there we go let me minimize this and as you can see i've got a new folder under my source directory by the name of post and if you expand this post directory you will notice that it has got its own module okay its own controller file uh the old, its own service okay a folder for entities and dtos so we'll look into entities and DTOs a little bit later in the course. Let's quickly have a look at the post service. So if you notice, the Nest schematics has created the CRUD functions here. So CRUD stands for stands for create, read, update, and delete. So this is my create function. This is my read function these two are my read functions so find all and find one this is my update function and this is the delete function okay similarly all these functions as you can see are in bold yellow color that means they are they are being used somewhere so since this is the post service so the most likely place where this service might have been called is the post controller so let's have a look at the post controller there we go as you can see that we have all these methods which are calling their respective uh, methods in the post service and we are injecting the post service in the constructor using dependency dependency injection like we saw in the previous video and this is our post controller and we are using the controller decorative decorator and we also have these post get patch and delete decorators so all these decorators they come from the nest.js common package as you can see on the top 
So this decorator indicates that the function beneath it is a get. Uh, I mean, this would be a HTTP get request. Similarly, this would be the HTTP post. So anybody uh, accessing HTTP localhost 5000 slash post, this is the prefix. And if if they simply use a get request, it will hit this function. Okay, let me just show you. If I go back to my, I mean, with my server running here, of course, server running, and I go to my postman here, and I simply type HTTP localhost 5000 post. So I'm I'm using a get request here. So I should get the uh, find all method here. And I if I put any ID here, so this returns the number one post. Uh, if I change it to post without the parameter, it will return add some new post. This is the create method that's getting called. If I go to patch with the id of course because whenever you are patching or deleting anything you need to reference a particular post id number or, or anything of that sort so if i hit enter so this is the update method and if i go to delete hit send this is the delete method okay so this is the default output okay that are that, that, that are there in my methods okay so we have to change these uh, strings to something useful and that we will do in the upcoming videos okay so let's quickly uh, go to the entities and see what we have there we have only a class by the name of post and dtos if i open the create dto it's also empty so dto stands for data transfer object so okay so whenever you're sending some data from the front end you don't want to manipulate uh, your entity directly rather it's advisable to create a dto and uh, map it to your entity in the back end okay so we'll see how we can do that using uh, the javascript uh, there is a tool available that is uh, known as auto mapper and you can use that uh, particular tool to map the DTOs to their corresponding entities and vice versa. But in this particular course, I will not be using AutoMapper for NestJS, but you can definitely go and uh, take a look uh, on the internet. And if you need any help with that, let me know. I can help you with that. Not, not an issue. So with this, I'm going to end this video and we'll work on the entities and the type ORM so we'll, we'll have to integrate type ORM package in our nest project to uh, communicate with the database so we will be using MySQL as we uh, discussed in the previous videos so we will uh, work on the configuration part for the type ORM in the next video so till then please like subscribe to my channel and have a wonderful day bye bye